welcome. Anyone who's been to Merchant City Yoga on a Sunday knows how much I love catching up with everyone over a cup of my freshly brewed spiced chai. These Sunday chai sessions really bring everyone together. A true celebration of friendship, community and connection. I want to try and capture some of that magic and share it with you at home. So I've invited some familiar faces from our MCY family to chat with me over a cuppa. I'm affectionately calling them the chai sessions. Pop the kettle on, get yourself comfy and come and join us. Lucy, welcome to our chai session. I have my cup of tea ready to wet my whistle as we chat. Cheers. But yes. before we dive in, just for anyone who maybe hasn't met you yet, um, Lucy and I are fellow aficionados, would we say, of Yoga Nidra, very passionate about the benefits of Yoga Nidra. Um, and so I'm really delighted that Lucy regularly comes to the studio to share her Yoga Nidra with everyone and is inspired um, to share seasonal yoga nidra. Anyone who has been to, to any kind of number of classes with me will at some point have heard me say, Lucy, that I think deep conscious relaxation is really underrated and actually might even be getting a bit lost and kind of the, the modern yoga scene, you know, when classes are getting shorter, um, you know, people are attending classes in gym, for example, so there's a really fast turnaround. You know, I remember when back in 19 canteen, when I started yoga, there was at least 20 minutes, if not longer, at the end of class dedicated to um, some form of guided relaxation. And that's just not the case now. Um, so like I say, I'm really excited that you come to the studio and share these extended um, yoga nidras and I'm excited to to have you here to to do a bit of geeking out because I know every time you come in we, we do a little bit of, of geeking out about yoga nidra. So I thought a lovely place to start would be um, telling us about how you first discovered yoga nidra. Thanks Judy, thank you very much for having me. Um... Yeah, I first experienced it in my prenatal yoga classes. And it was at that very time as well that I began my training as a yoga teacher, my 200 hour training. Um, I'd first encountered yoga as a practice when I was at the art school of Glasgow, Glasgow Art School of Art, and um, had, had come from burnout in my mid to late 20s. I was um, working in a company that most, well, I would say, most of us have heard of, I'm not going to say it, but um, in marketing, and it just was not my vibe, but it was good. You know, sometimes you need to um, fall on your face to, <laughs> to realise that you're falling on your face and it's not right for you. Anyway, so, you know, jump forward um, however many years, I don't know, 12, something like that. And it was an incredible practice, but I first experienced it, and we've had this chat, um, you know, from the little blue book, the Satyananda yoga nidra and it was um just yeah, a wonderful right. yeah there yeah. we go um it was a wonderful um opportunity to deeply rest in a way that i had never experienced and mm -hmm. i think as well you know your comment about how deep restful practice there simply isn't time or um you know it's, it's not, not even really seen importance in class yeah um, it's not even seen as a practice is it, it it's not it's something that's maybe tacked on quite a nice yeah. thing to do at the end but it's yeah. not really seen as as a separate practice in its own right well the way i view nidra is it it is it suits coming after physical practice very well if you think about the five koshas you know we start with the gross the anamaya kosha then we're working with the pranamaya kosha and then we go through you know all of the different states and actually you know if all you do is have a quick um lie down or not even that or 10 slow breaths and then you're out the door and and don't you know like don't get me wrong i have classes where we're limited with time and, and people come because they need to physically work with their bodies and their breath and that's you know i, I don't diss it because i love it you know of course we love it yeah but, um, and that has benefit you know there's definitely yeah, value totally. in that but it's that deep rest either at the end 
of class, well, seem to be at the end, which is actually all of the stuff we've done beforehand in class is preparation for that moment, for that practice. It's like meditation. Yes. It's like the ascendance of, you know, pranayama. It's, it's you know, our breath work, I'm a, an instructor, whatever it is, you know, like yeah. it's nothing that the yogis haven't known about for a huge length of time and the benefits of it. But if you think about what seems to be the bedrock of our contemporary experiences is a level of stress that's just the norm. We don't know that we're stressed. People yes. are coming with all of these different conditions, whether it's frozen shoulder, these locked in patterns of holding and tension that are just locked within certain areas of the body. And we all have them, you know, and especially yeah. if you practice regularly, we kind of, you know, cure what cannot be endured and we endure what can be cured. You know, we know that that's our dodgy hip or whatever. Um, yeah. And that's the wonderful thing about having a regular physical practice, you know, something like a stanga or whether it's vinyasa flow. A practice that is thorough is always helpful. But, you know, Nidra, I think, is an exceptional practice because it's something very familiar. And yes, we were talking earlier to link in with, you know, um, either you know, having family locally or not. And I don't have my my own family locally. And um, so when I was training as a yoga teacher, pregnant, you know, it was an incredible time. But when my first daughter was born, it was a very, it was the steepest learning curve ever. And you also experience it with repeated sleep deprivation. <laughs> so it's kind of like a torture, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then, you know, you, you don't know what you're doing. And, and also your baby is a person with their own patterns. And, you know, literally anyone will say like, you can have, you know, the next baby you have is completely different. Of course they would be. So for me, yoga nidra was a very powerful practice because it helped me regain this rest that I needed in a comparatively short period of time. It provided me with a structure so I didn't have to be just lying there. People say, oh, sleep when your baby sleeps, but you're absolutely stressed because and you're exhausted. So yeah. there's all of this going on. It really helped and provided me a safe space and a structure to top up my rest. But also it, as a practice, it's, it's how we come home to ourselves. And if you think of every mm. aspect of yoga practice, is that, is that, you know, it's one of the ways, and I know that, you know, you're a passionate Ashtangi, you know, Ashtanga is that very physical dedication to coming home to ourselves it's like dealing with our ego on the mat or you know if you are a, a med you know a, a person that has a strong meditation practice we just keep you know inviting ourselves to be present and the mind will yeah. go off and do it you know in some days you feel like oh you're so calm and so beatific and other days it's just you know it's like a mosh pit yeah um those they, yeah because i think everything you're talking about there offers the invitations to turn inwards again and again and again and again and again you know when we get all distracted and caught up in what's happening out there or you know all those thoughts that are popping up like popcorn um and all of these things offer an invitation simply to turn your attention back inwards yeah and, and so on a deep phys physiological level you know you were talking about how um you know, just having a decent length of relaxation at the end mm -hmm. of class. That can be a challenge for a lot of people because we're so switched on and um, perhaps we haven't got a strong mindset practice and, you know, we'll be coming in with either the mind's just doing its chuntering, busy, busy to-do list, you know, and also we're so busy, time, you know, we have to schedule in things. Yes. But also you might be, then you've got that kind of inner critic coming in with, oh, I can't relax, I can't relax on my knee, oh, you know, whatever, all of that. Um, things so I think that yoga nidra is a really useful um, reliable structured practice to that can help us access a deeper state and because we essentially harness the very familiar practice of falling asleep 
um, that there's, there's no sense that there's anything to do. Now, you see, I don't really, I, I don't do scripted Nidra because I, um, in my training with Uma Dinsmore Tully and Nalipta Tully, who are, are wonderful, um, wonderful people, we have a good understanding. We, we learn about key schools and lineages within yoga nidra tradition but you know with so many schools um not just in yoga nidra you know this they're tainted in a way you know like any power structure unfortunately with um mm. you know recent things coming to light of, of abuse and um so we have a thorough understanding of the structures um of what what might make a yoga nidra um so there's certain there's like a pattern that you would follow and then you know why you would have your that rotation of consciousness for example you'd know why um you might have a space for sankalpa or not i often don't because i also feel that we i don't know if i'm of a certain age I don't you remember cracker jack and there'd be like the cabbage game at the end and you get to play it and either you get a massive board game, you know, 1970s, early 80s, like that's what the kids was a good gift for a kid. Or you get a cabbage and then you'd have this massive pile of things. And if you dropped anything, uh-uh, you didn't get it. And I, I love was... that you're remembering it in so much detail. I also remember it too. Maybe <laughs> not in quite as much detail. <laughs> yeah. So, for example, a San Calpa is another thing to be doing. Yeah. And nidra is an invitation to simply be and so if we look at the evolution of of what it means nidra sleep a yogic sleep this sense of using it to better ourselves is a recent and and i, and I don't diss it is a recent you know from the 70s which is when satyananda evolved their technique of yoga nidra but actually, historically, there was a sense of having Nivakalpa, having actually a settling so much, an internalizing so much that we are simply being. And if you look at what can happen neurologically whilst we are experiencing yoga nidra, all of those wonderful brainwave states that we go through in sleep, we can experience in the practice. So... It is useful to have a sankalpa, but it's not essential. It depends what it is that you mm -hmm. need out of the practice. And often, you know, I, I look around the room and I just see all of all of these people. We're all trying to do our best all the time. And wouldn't it be lovely if literally it was an effortless practice? And and that is how I lead the nidra. And um, you know, I, I've chosen that. It's funny because I published on Insight Timer, so people are very welcome to uh, follow me on that. There's loads of different lovely seasonal elemental nidras there, um, and I'm going to be doing some more, you know, stuff there too. Um, and the wonderful thing about having, say, something that's seasonal that evolves with the year is it often really supports and reflects back to you how you're feeling energetically, and that can mm -hmm. feel like something that's very supportive not just uh this is nidra and this is how it needs to be which also has its place because we can talk a little bit yeah, about nidra absolutely as, as a hypnotic trance um practice and yeah, the similarities and differences it has to say clinical hypnosis like you know satya yeah. saying it's not you hypnosis know, it's... is a kind of we can explore that too if we want to but it definitely is a trans um thing but yeah, so that's why if you were to come to one of our sessions, it might be a bit structurally different. Well, it, I would imagine it would be because I not only reference Satyananda School, I reference and draw from the IREST Institute, which is an incredibly important um, recent uh, school um, evolved by Dr. R Richard Miller. And he's worked with the American military looking at PTSD you know so this yeah, his is, book's very helpful as well yeah and it's concise and he's got some lovely recordings as well um yeah you know also um reference the himalayan institute also the i am yoga nidra which is the amrit desai 
approach to yoga nidra and they look at it very much through the five koshas and this wonderful sense that it's actually through yoga nidra we we get to effortlessly experience an andamaya kosha which is like you know people might have sat in a cave meditating for years yeah yeah and they're at the rock face of our minds you know or you know which we are and it's not to um do down that that mindset training meditation is an incredibly powerful practice but because of that it can feel a very a, a real challenge and yeah and that's, that's, that's actually a lovely approach as well isn't it so tying it in with the energetic body that's talked about within the kind of yoga lexicon as well so when people come to your session lucy can you tell us a little bit more about what they might expect um because i know certainly if they've practiced with me i'm a bit old school um and i actually love the structure and repetition of like satyananda and bihar's approach and i think that possibly comes from you know how we tend to love one of our first exposures to it. And I was so fortunate to um, attend a weekend workshop with um, one of the teachers from the Bihar um, Institute, actually way before I discovered Ashtanga Yoga. And um, I think for a very long time, I struggled to sit, you know, I struggled with meditation practice, sitting practice. That's clearly one of the things that appeals about an Ashtanga practice because you're moving and it's really strong and dynamic. And through that, it really helps you bring some focus and concentration to what you're doing. Um, But I was fortunate enough to discover Yoga Nidra before getting caught up in the Ashtanga. And so it's always been for me a really really valuable counterpoint to that and I've always felt that the really strong physical practice is an excellent preparation for then going on to to take a nidra practice but I think it probably says something about my psyche as well that that the ashtanga practice and the satyananda approach to yoga nidra they're fairly structured there's a consistency through each practice. Um, I love that Swami Satyananda took what is a really old tantric practice of the nyasa of placing and the the old tantric practices would be placing a mantra on in parts of your body essentially. I'm paraphrasing here, I'm probably not doing it justice. Um, and what he did was he wanted those practitioners who didn't have experience of Sanskrit mantra to be able to get the benefits of a practice like that. So he kind of simplified that a little bit and developed this rotation of consciousness, you know, rotation of awareness around the body. And so, like I say, I'm not unaware that these are two quite structured practices that probably say a lot about me. So anyone who has practiced with me, that's that's the kind of approach that I bring to it and, and I find real value in. So maybe tell them a little bit about what to expect when they come to one of your sessions. Um, yeah, well, there's a, a little bit of structure in that, you know, it's like bring things that you're going to feel utterly comfortable and that can luxuriate over and around. And there are, you know, um, bolsters and mats and things like that and blankets in the studio. But sometimes it's really lovely to bring your own i bring um lovely scented eye masks from um you know ecotex yoga in, in edinburgh and um so the first thing is physical comfort um, yeah, and also that sensory thing about that as well there's something around using yeah i mean just there. Yeah. having time to physically settle to really allow that you know what it is to be that person or or me you know I am very tight up my back and when you're for example so just having that time to to settle and the layers of tension start to slowly release um and then you know just bringing the awareness to the breath is a really important so if you think about you know that's anamaya kosha then pranamaya kosha just that gentle ebb and flow of the breath and it can be in a way that just feels really reassuring now I don't need a script I might have a little map 
like a little you know mind map um especially if i've got two different ones and i would like to just include things but i'm not reading i'm holding the space because i need to um my intention is to create and hold a very safe space so you can trust and completely relax and know that i'm the eyes and ears for the group like a little meerkat or the you know we can be our little nidra meerkats and i'm awake and aware um i also in my visualizations i tailor them to the natural world and i make sure that i have you know a lot of anchoring back being in our bodies on the floor in the room because i don't know what people's histories are and when we work on the level of visualizations a lot of them could potentially be triggering yeah so you know i'm responsive it's a dance as it were that's um crafted for everybody's well-being um so that we can sink deeper and deeper into a really reassuring deep relaxation which switches us into our rest and digest where we can you know you might even sense that you drift off somewhere um you might not you might feel that you're alert and awake for everything and then actually when you come out of it people will be talking about a part of the practice and you're like well what part i don't remember that you know there's also oh, that classic I, i'm sure they didn't do the left hand side thing <laughs> yeah well yeah I mean, the fact is, because for a lot of the practices I teach, you know, it's not going to just be a Satyananda rotation. There might be the 61 Marma point rotation that's lovely. used by the Himalayan Institute. And that's a lovely one. Um, yeah. There might be actually a rotation that I've devised because it's to do with the energy of the season. So say if it's late summer, there might be a sense of feeling both earthed, both centered, but also this rising energy where we're working with the um, energy of the spleen. And it's to do with our immune systems. So there'll be a reason why there's a structured rotation of consciousness, but there will be a rotation of consciousness, if that makes sense. So it's like yes. taking the specificity, if that's the word, of say something that say your your um, students may have experienced a certain form through Satyananda. There are many forms of rotation of consciousness. So it's like taking yes. a step back, know that that will definitely be an element of your practice but it might be different to the one that you've experienced. I also don't mind if people move. I also don't tell people not to fall asleep. All of these things, I, d I don't really tell anyone to do anything. And if anything, I invite people to feel very, very welcome. And there's no one way to practice. And often, you know, say if you, you've got down there a bit quick or, or, or you, you've got like a sore, sore bit in your body, after a bit, you might think, Actually, I do need to move. And then imagine being in this situation where you're supposedly relaxing. But, you know, and we've all been there where something's really itchy or, or sore. So, you know, it's that invitation to feel that we can be as we need to be mindful of everybody else as well. Um, yeah. And that can feel really welcoming and um, like the you space know, that we're in is. Is yes is effortless yeah things like that definitely come up don't they when you start to to look at extended periods of relaxation and yoga nidra rather than just the quick five or ten minutes at the end you know when you are extending it to sort of 30 45 minutes um lots of things come up for people and you don't have to lie on your back you can lie on your side you can have your leg up on a bolster we explored that in the last one and that's a really wonderful way to yeah. practice you can lie on your front which is amazing in late summer because I'm not a front lying girl, but when I do, it's like someone just switches the lights off and I'm like that, boom. And there's something to do with obviously the way that the pressure through the body, you know, is coming through the, the front of the body into the earth, that relationship with gravity. Um, and you can think of all of the physiological reasons why, but energetically it's just ooh, amazing. Um, and it's good that you brought up the different lengths of practice. So, for example, depending on the season, um, we'll um, have practices generally, I'd say, are about 22 to about 27 minutes. 
and um, much of that is to do with our rhythms that we go through with brainwave states when we sleep. So it's like a 90 minute rhythm and then you can cut that in half and then you can cut that in half again. But say, for example, with our winter one that we've got booked in for February, we are definitely going to do a full 45 minute Himalayan Institute Amazing. one with singing bowls, working with the chakras, um, the one in um, the one in late summer, we're going to use my little beautiful German engineered Sansula um, and some chimes. So there'll be like, a, often I use sound. And one of the reasons being is that the practice of yoga nidra, if you look at it elementally, it's um, very much a, a water practice. You think, what does that mean? Crazy lady. Well, <laughs> in, <laughs> the water. Not um, at all energy lines um are those associated with this um, with winter and they are the ones to do with the bladder and kidneys so that sense of feeling at home safe or not and so we spoke earlier about the fact that often we have a level of stress that's just normalized within us you know a level yeah. of anxiety yeah. that we might self-medicate with coffee with chocolate with workouts with whatever but it's the busyness just trying to kind of you know and um, so when we work on this very deep level, um, yoga nidra, you know, it, it, it's working on that deep soothing. So the body is in deep rest. So we can then really nourish the body. The blood starts to go to the organs rather than being stuck in the muscles. Um, those patterns of habitual holding and tension that we all have in our body, like, you know, it's like rigging the way that our ship we sail our ship through each day that has an opportunity to start to soften you become perhaps aware of it you know it's like you might have tension in the shoulder because that's always where you carry your bag or that one and then in yoga nidra you're lying down in a mindful practice long enough that you think oh gosh actually and then it can just release um as i say we're experiencing these very important um, ebb and flow of different brainwave states and actually with each brainwave state there's a release of really helpful hormones and neurotransmitters in the body that really help us feel good can really boost our mood so if you're you know struggling with stress and experiencing that in different ways um, then yoga nidra is this incredible potent and i would call it a sleep practice yeah and that's why i love it yeah, so I think just to pull everything we've spoken about back together again, and I appreciate a little bit of what you've just said, maybe um, anticipated my question, but I just wondered what you think the most significant benefits of yoga nidra are. Stillness. The invitation, as I said, to come home to ourselves. Because essentially and eventually, that's exactly what we're all going to do. That's the one certainty in life. And I, I think as a physical practice, you know, how it helps us physically cannot be underestimated. You know, you may, I've had clients, I've got so many different health issues, on, you know, ongoing health issues and actually Yoga Nidra is one of the most accessible practices and it's such a reassuring and deeply, you know, really helps, I think, health and well-being on a physical level, on a mental health level and on an emotional level. And it's the one thing that increasingly societally we're sleeping less and less we're on our screen so much more so it's a it's a really good um you know um counter practice <laughs> to our daily habits but yes i i really believe that it opens up a sense that we can just be and that i think that really essentially especially if we're yogis that's that's the real draw of what the why And I think that is a perfect place to stop. Lucy, thank you so much for having the chat. 
and I'll see you soon. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed our chat. If you've got any questions, you can email me or find us on social media. I'll see you here next time.